Hi everybody, my name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. We're the Yahoo and then the Torah YouTube channel. Spit it out, Eli. And we are here and we are doing the Law, Statutes, and Commandments of Messiah Yahushua. We are on John 15, what, 15 today. And uh, gentlemen, how you guys doing? Good. good. How's, uh, how, how are you? Is everything good? Good, yeah. yeah. Jade, your hands are good from yep. fencing? Yeah, they're... Uh, no cuts? Uh, there are a few cuts. A few cuts on my hands are mostly fine. Eli, how's your arm? Um, it... Getting better. Getting better still hurts? Yeah. A little bit. It's been a long time, though. Yeah. Uh, what, eight weeks? What's that? I think it's been about eight weeks. Has it's it been about eight less weeks? Than that. Last week. All right. All right. So today is month 11 on the creator's calendar. It is, um, I have no idea what day it is. Today. It would be the, what, the Let's 15th say today? No, it'd be the 16th. It's 7th of February, the right? Second, the yeah. 16th day. 16th day on our creator's calendar. It's the 7th day of February. It is the Third day of this week, and um, I guess we shall begin into this and see what we have right quick. And um, thanks, Eli. Oh. That's all right. I no, what you didn't, you didn't say I, just, I know. I'm just trying to get this thing going. Okay. Um, this is um, the farming chapter. This is. Um, I don't. I don't want to go under. Well, Cade's laughing there. Um, remember when we had all of our vines in the backyard? Remember when we had all our, our watermelons mm -hmm. and our stuff like that? We had two incidents when we had our vines and something happened to the vines. Remember what happened the first time? Cows. First time the cows jumped over and they tap danced and wiped us completely out of all our crops of that, right? And they stomped on the vine and when you stomp on the vine, it kills it. Then we had Cade go out one time and fertilize it, and he like made it look like snow out there. There was so much fertilizer, then it killed everything. This has been like two years, and I still haven't lived it down. You will not live this down, because we are talking about a true vine, and um, this is very, very important that we understand that a um, when you damage a vine, it doesn't matter how much the plant looks or how good it looks, it will eventually die. Okay, so here we are. John 15. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. Every branch that is in me that bears no fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already cling because of the word which I have spoken to you. Okay, let's talk about this real quick, guys. Um, this, is, this is Messiah says he is the true vine. He is the vine. And he says that every branch in him that does not bear fruit is cut down. What does he mean by this? Uh, so it kind of goes back to, you know, what John the Baptist said, every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and tossed into the fire. Yeah, and there's an axe laid at the bottom of every tree, and, and if you do not produce fruit, then you will get the axe on that. And so what what is what is producing fruit, gentlemen? Producing fruit is teaching the word, uh, helping people out, um, doing good. Yeah, and I mean, when we produce, how, how do we know what good is and what bad is? Based upon the Torah. We know Torah. the Torah is, we know what is good, what is bad. If it, if it is breaking the Torah, it is bad. If you are helping your neighbor, if you are helping someone, you and are... And what good. books are the Torah? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The first five books of the Bible, when you open your Bible. Yep, first five books of the Bible. Okay, and then he says right here, you are already cling because of the word which I have spoken to you. What does he mean by this? Um... I, I think it has to go back to when he's talking about like cleaning them, cleaning their feet and stuff. I think he's kind of talking about here. He's like, you clean because I've spoken, because I've given you my words. That could be. Anything else? Anyone else have any thoughts on this thing? Um, does it, does it because of the Torah, are we made clean? We are shown that we are not clean. That's where Yahushua comes in, right? When we have the Torah, we are unclean because we are breaking the Torah. Because we have broken the Torah and therefore we are not perfect. But when Yahushua comes in, he comes in to absolve us of those imperfections. Yeah. Okay, so continuing on to four. Stay in me and I in you. As the branch is unable to bear fruit of itself unless it stays in the vine, so neither you unless you stay in me. Okay. We can't bear fruit if we show if we if we go away from our tree our, our little root here if we go away from Yahuwah and Yahushua then we have we can't bear fruit. Yeah, and if we're we're um, saying things like Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are all one and we're teaching people the same way, we are definitely not bearing fruit. And there's a lot of false teachers out there. One of them is Paul Nissan. Paul Nissan is an absolute false teacher and. The people are people are hooked on him. He has one channel that has a hundred thousand subs, another channel that has fifty thousand subs, and he swears that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are the same thing. And he, he says clearly that you're an idiot 
if you don't believe that and how you're lost it out of scriptures when it clearly says this. And so it is very, very um, bad news when people are just teaching very much evil stuff. Okay, five. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who stays in me and I in him. He bears much fruit because without me, you are able to do not. Okay, thoughts, gentlemen? What does it mean he, that without Messiah, we are able to do anything? Um, probably because we can't be clean, so we can't bear fruit. You know, we can't, he says if you stray from the vine, you're not able to bear fruit. So without, without you have to have both of them. You have to have Yahuwah and his Torah, then you have to have Yehoshua and his repentance. Yeah. And if you don't have those things, then you cannot bear fruit. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one without the other, it, 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 the Torah, one without the other, I would say it doesn't make sense, but they do make sense. But you, if you have just Messiah Yahushua and you do not have the Torah, then you're throwing away everything good that could possibly be in your life. Basically, if you only have Yahushua and you don't have the Torah or Yahuwah, you basically there's no reason for Yahushua because you don't need to repent for anything. Yeah, there'd be no, there'd be no sin, right? If, if it didn't mean anything. So, all right, seven. If you stay in me and my words stay in you, you shall ask whatever you want and it shall be done for you. In this, my father's esteem that you bear much fruit and you shall be my Talmudian. As the father has loved me, I have also loved you. Stay in my love. Okay, what does it mean right here that he clearly says something that, that a lot of people don't get. A lot of people don't understand. When we pray, we want to wrap our prayers up. How, Jaden? Um, in the name of in, in, uh, in the name of Yehoshua. Yeah, and it says, you shall ask whatever you want and it shall be done for you. Now, we've gone over this before. Does this mean every prayer that you have will be answered? No, if you start asking like, uh, I need I need this much money. I can you please give me this? I don't think he's gonna give you that much money out of nowhere. I don't think he's gonna do that for you. I mean, he might bless you with some kind of help, but yeah, I don't think he's gonna, if you like worldly needs, I don't think he's gonna like be giving that to you immediately. Yeah, and and when we ask when we ask this and we pray in the name of Yahushua, um, that is how our prayer should be. But the prayers are only going to be answered if it is the will of our Creator. If we're going against the will of our Creator and we continue to pray. That that you know something goes against the will of our Creator. That that's not right because His will is what we need to accept as as everything. Okay, eight. In this, my Father's esteem that you bear much fruit, and you shall be my Talmudian. As the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Stay in my love. Okay, this is a Trinity breaker, right? The Father loved him. He just claims. He says the Father loves him. If he was the father and he says the father loves me and he was the father, this would make the man insane. Okay, 10. If you guard my commands, you shall stay in my love, even as I have guarded my father's commands and stay in his love. Okay, what is he saying by this verse right here? If you keep the commandments, you will be loved by Yahuwah and Yahushua. What He says my commands. What commands are we talking about? Well, his commands are his father's commands. He talks about it before how he does not bring us new commands, but the commands of old. Yeah. Yeah, nothing has been new. It's all the same old <laughs> commands that are, that are there today. 11. These I have spoken to you so that my joy might be in you and that your joy might be complete. This is my command. Okay, so we finally have a command here. This is my command that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, that one, one should lay down his life for his friends. Okay, so we finally have a commandment here. This is a, this is a commandment that we can do. So we will end up with one new commandment today, right? Do we have a Torah commandment that says, love one another as I have loved you? No, we have love one another as you love yourself, but I think that is someone else like Moses or Yahuwah loved us. Yeah, and so this is a new commandment. These are, a, these are the commandments we have been seeking in this section. Um, and so we will add this in there. Um, and so we need to add this too, Mystical, so we don't forget these. I know, I need to update it. Okay, so we'll also have to go through it, but just so we don't lose track, can you make sure you have uh, yes. John 15, 12, please? Okay, then he goes on. No one has greater love than this, that one should lay down his life for his friends. What does he mean by this? Um, what does he mean? I guess what he's talking about. Yeah, he's gonna get sacrifice. He's gonna go get sacrificed for us. That he's since he's our friend, he is going to go and die for us. Yeah, and I mean, is that the greatest sacrifice you could ever do for somebody? Is to literally save their life and lose yours in yeah, the process? That's, that's a life. That's a trade of life, right? That shows 
more love than anything when you're willing to give up your own life for someone else to save them. Yeah, and I look at that like a hero ending, right? If you would, you know, I've always wanted to be the guy that, you know, lost my life breaking down a door trying to save a kid in a burning building or just doing something that, you know, it would be worth saving another life would definitely be worth the end of my life for sure, without a shadow of a doubt, is, is that my thinking. Okay, your thoughts too? You guys, did you yeah. guys do it? You guys, you guys are all willing to do it for a stranger? I mean, if somebody's on along the road and it, if you had to change, swap your life for theirs, would you? Yeah, because I I am confident. I know I know the Father, right? I keep the Torah. I do this. I know where I'm going, right? There's no confusion at the end. And if this person doesn't know, they have a chance now to go on with their life and live the Torah life. Absolutely. That was very well put. Okay, 14. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. Okay? Plain and simple, Right. So what does that make people that don't do what he asks you to do? Enemies. Yeah, I mean, he says, you are my friends. Enemies so, of the Messiah. Yeah, by default, um, you could reword that. You are not my friends if you don't do what I command you, right? And so what he commands is that we, is, you know, the two of the greatest commands is, is to love our Elohim most high with all our heart, mind, and soul and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And um, that is what Messiah's whole world was a built them on okay 15 no longer do i call you servants for a servant does not know what his master is doing but i have called you friends for all which i heard from my father i have made known to you okay again he just clearly says he heard something from his father if he was the father and he heard that that would make him a schizophrenic right a schizo and so we don't want to have our creator and his son and all the people that are um, managing our lives um, be a schizo, right? That that doesn't give us um, hope on a solid <laughs> where we're going to go. This guy could be crazy, but he's not, right? He says clearly, when he heard from his father, you have to hear from your father. Your father is a separate entity, right? You're not going to hear from yourself, and he's not going to be lying to us over and over and over. Okay, 16. You did not choose me. But I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain so that whatever you ask the father in my name, he might give you. Okay. So it's, he says something about bearing fruit. And then when you bear the fruit, when you're bearing this, when you ask your request to our creator in the name of the Messiah, that he might give it to you. Right. So there's, there's a couple of, of conditions, right? If you are not bearing fruit and you're asking for things and you're asking for it in the name of our Messiah and you are not bringing the world of the kingdom closer and you're not bringing people to the kingdom, you're not bearing fruit. And so we have every single day that we have an opportunity that we can find somebody who's never, ever heard the word. And regardless of how embarrassed we get, we can definitely tell people what our beliefs are. And so if we don't want to be timid, we don't want to be scared, right? If we're scared and timid, you know, there's a good chance we could get rejected as well from where we want to be. 17, these I command you so that you would love one another. Okay, so again, uh, John 15, 17 is a reiteration of that same command up above, mystical. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before you. Well, that's good. Because um, it sometimes, sometimes YouTube has been kind, a bit more kinder these days. For a while, we had um, lots and lots and lots and lots of Christians and lots of diehard Palestinians that um, they hated Yah and they loved Paul, and so they hate everything that has to do with the Torah. And they, they sit there for a while, but they, they kind of, I don't know, they, maybe they just went off to other channels or something and attacked them. I don't know. 19. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, yet I chose you out of the world, for that reason the world hates you, right? And so this is big stuff that a lot of people get down in the dumps. A lot of people don't understand why the world is, is so cruel and so evil. And, you know, if we are in the Torah, if we are seeking our Messiah, if we are seeking our Creator, um, the devil is, is going to try to um, hurt us. 20. Remember the word that I said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they shall persecute you too. If they have guarded my word, they would guard yours too. Okay? Why would they guard your word if they guarded our Messiah's? I mean, if we told people what to do, what they're like, hey, you follow the Torah, this is the right way to life. But they're like, uh, yeah, no, they don't do it. Because they, they, if, they, if they know this, they would like follow Yehoshua's words and they're already following the Torah. 
Yeah, and if they were to guard, I mean, they're they're um, they they, they would uh, I, I don't know how to say this, but essentially, um, you're not going to have the words that are outside of Torah. Your words, if, if you have words that should be guarded, they would be based upon the Torah. They're not going to be your personal opinion of how things are. Um, we need to guard the the correct word. Twenty one. But all this they shall do to you because of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. Okay? Him who sent me, um, Trinity Breaker, again, right? Him who sent him is not himself. Yahuwah sent Yahushua, and it is, that's how it is. And, you know, I, I don't know how the Christians read the Trinity and all this stuff. It just it doesn't make any sense. 22. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. All right, what does he mean by this? Uh, basically, basically, they know now that once you tell them that people are in the Torah, once you come and tell them that the Torah exists and all these things, you explain to these people that there is a law, there is a right and wrong, there is a, the ability to sin. You ha you're you still sinning, right? You still have this ability to sin, even though you think you can't sin, you're perfect anymore. They know now, and they have no excuse on Judgment Day when they say, oh, I never knew, I never heard of this, and like, and Yah says, well, I sent this guy to you, and you, you still turned him away. My poor dear mother and your poor dear grandma. Um, she hears all of this all the time, and she has, uh, you know, the, she has a thousand different excuses out of the Christian religion for why she does not want to love our Creator with all her heart, mind, and soul. And I continually tell her this, and, you know, like she said the other day, if she was celebrating her, her Sabbath the wrong day, she won't know until Yah comes and spanks her. And I'm like, well, that's that's a little too late. We shouldn't be um, waiting for that time. We should be, you know, following it. But, you know, it's, it's unfortunate. And, it, you know, I, I'm working. We got to work really, really hard um, to try to get her to see this because uh, she is older and um, she was a victim of the 2019 uh, thing that was going on. And so a lot of a lot of issues and so everybody needs to pray for everybody and and you know the people that are dwindling away 23 he who hates me hates my father as well wow another trinity breaker right how do you hate the same person and call it two different people um 24 if i did not do among them the works which no one else did they would have no sin but now they have both seen and have hated both me and my father. Again, Trinity Breaker. Me and my father. My father and I, right? I am. I'm not saying... He, he's not saying he is the father. He has never, ever said that. 25. But that the word might be filled, which was written in their Torah. They hated me without a cause. And when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the father, the Ruach of the truth, who comes from the father, he shall bear witness of me. But you also bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. All right, um, so that is that. Thoughts on this, gentlemen? Uh, good chapter, very informative from Yahushua. Very, once you understand that, once you can wrap your head around that they are not all the same people, it becomes very clear and the message becomes much easier to understand. Yeah, yeah, our, our creator did not send himself down to die at the hands of Hasatan just because he wanted to see if that the enemy could kill him or something, right? You're saying Gabriel ran heaven or something for like yeah, three who, days. Yeah, who ran it? Who you know, Moshe take over the lead for a couple days or something? I feel like or? the angels would somehow just really just mess it up and go astray, right? They're like we already saw with uh, the two hundred that went down the mountain. They all fell astray. We had the giants, but the whole thing. I feel like without Yah's supervision, like they would just they would like go astray. There would be a huge power shift on things. Yeah, and I mean, imagine those three days if they did kill our Creator and the the havoc. Where did he go for three days? I mean, did, did he have any control over those three days? He was dead, right? Those are the things. They did not kill him. They, 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 they were able, by the hand of, by the allowing of our messiahs and the, our creators, they allowed it to happen, but they, they allowed their life, his life, messiahs, to be laid down at the hands of Hasatan because it, it was a way for us to get out of the world that we are into and to give us that salvation that we needed that Yeshua, the Yahushua that we needed, the salvation. And so um, I guess that is it, um, everybody. We will not be doing a um, Ecclesia this tomorrow night. Um, we've got all sorts of crazy stuff going on right here. And so we're already trying to pre-plan for this. And so we will, um, I guess, see you guys tomorrow morning. 
And hopefully everything will all be alive tomorrow morning for that. And uh, we love you all and hope you guys have a wonderful day. And we will see you again soon. All right. Shalom.